Hey everyone, welcome to a brand new Facebook Live, uh, a live stream extraordinaire, whether whatever you're watching on Mental Health on the Mighty. My name is Rudy Caceres, and I am your host for this panel. We're talking about bipolar and romantic love, and I am by no means um, a romantic expert. I'm married, so I guess I did something right, but I'm going to bring on my panelists, my fellow panelists and mental health advocates, they're going to talk about their experiences. And none of us are like our psychologists or psychiatrists, or whatever. We're just speaking from our own lived experience. We all have lived with bipolar and um, have stories to share, to say the least. But we also want to hear from you. So if you're watching this live, please let us know that you're here. Let us know that you care. Let us know where you're from. We love our mighty international audience wherever you may be um especially like we, we've got people like in africa we've got people in the middle east we've got people in india in south america and all over europe and north america so please 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 if you have questions um just about living with bipolar and relationships uh, uh don't ask me for tips okay i'm just gonna say that straight off <laughs> You're on your own there. But if you just want to just hang out with us and talk about love, talk about um, the struggles, the positives, um, what, have, what has it been like been in relationships? What has the dating scene, scene been like, especially during COVID? Like, how have you been able to manage that? I see uh, we got we got our first person from Midwestern. And thank you, Joe, who has shared this stream. And you made my lights go off. So I appreciate that. <laughs> and you too can do that as well. So... <laughs> so uh have, have fun mean? at it if you like the stream it uh this makes it flash red for a couple of seconds if you share it uh it makes all kinds of things going on and then when you follow um it also does fun things as well so there you go um really quickly again my name is rudy caceres as it says right there, I'm a mental health advocate. I also do a lot of live streaming for The Mighty. I've been streaming every month uh, for quite some time. I started off doing interviews in person from their Burbank office, rest in peace. But now here I am in the comfort of my own home in Colorado, where I do these monthly panels where I get to talk with not only some of my my um, people that I've known for a while, my fellow bipolar advocates, but I also get to have on new people that I've never had even met before, which is cool. I got someone like that today. So, and that's about enough of me. Again, I'm Rudy Caceres. Follow me at Rudy Caceres on Twitter and Instagram. Without further ado, let's get into our first panelist. Tell the whole world, the whole mighty universe, a galaxy, solar system, who is Hannah Bloom? I am, well, as Rudy said, Hannah Bloom, and I am a writer and a mental illness activist, um, and I'm really happy to be here, and hello, everybody. That's that's pretty much the short of me. Yes, and you know, I like throwing curveballs, and so I want to make sure, uh, because, because we, we'll probably get this question or comment uh, a few times throughout the live stream, so what do you say to someone who says, as a lifelong bipolar, I've never been relationship material? From Elizabeth, thank you for sharing. Are you asking me, yes. Rudy? Um, what I would say is to stop telling yourself that um, because you are relationship material. Um, you're lovable and you're beautiful. And I think when we get a diagnosis of bipolar, we automatically um, assume that we are not good enough for someone else because that's what stigma tells us. But Elizabeth, that is not true. You are relationship material. You just um, haven't found and, and come across the right one. But believe in yourself. Don't tell, don't tell yourself you're not because you are. We all are. Everybody's imperfect. We just happen to wear a label that really makes us feel bad. Yes, true. Well said. And, and you've talked a lot about relationships. Like that mm -hmm. seems to be like one of your... Um, your your core issues that you talk about the most like what is it about relationships romance love that just like gives you so much passion that it's something that i know that you can just talk like on your own for like an hour straight no problem oh i love love i'm a writer and so it kind of comes with it 
And I think that love is just, it, it opens you up in so many beautiful ways. I think one of the reasons that I talk about it a lot as someone who's living with bipolar disorder in public about it is because I know how difficult it is, right? Like Elizabeth had said that comment. And um, I think talking about love is such a big issue in our community because we don't feel worthy. And so if I can, it's really about love and empowering people with mental illness at the same time. And I think a good way to do that is through talking about relationships. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Sorry. Uh, it does the trick for me. And like you, and you've also done a lot of videos. That's how I discovered you. Um, I remember when I was first like starting to share my story, I was like looking up bipolar videos and like a lot of them, to be honest, were garbage. Like... <laughs> They were either like had like 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 bad advice, like when they shouldn't have been given advice to begin with, or just like the production values were really low and all this stuff. And here you are, bright, like you have like a good sense of composition and everything. You're like to the point, like you're very entertaining. Yeah. And so like when I saw that, it's like, oh my God, like you can actually make videos about mental health, like from a lived uh. experience perspective, and it can actually be like entertaining and like be valuable. So I oh, always yeah, want to make, I always want to let that known is that like the reason why thank I'm you. reason why I'm doing stuff like this now is because I once stumbled upon your work and it'd be like, Oh my God, like I got to do stuff like that. Oh, Rudy, you inspire me. That's so kind. That really makes my heart full. Thank you. I'm, I'm inspired by you. Awesome. Awesome. And I, I wanted to share really quickly because you uh, you did a video for WebMD mm -hmm. about relationships. So I highly recommend I you go check that out. I am hopeless romantic. We'll, yes. I it's a, love, love. It's part of their mini docu series about uh, bipolar. So far, yeah, so, like, keep me that, entertained. There's you. Is oh, I was so blonde. <laughs> I love doing videos. So go go check that out. We'll leave all the links below in the comments. Um, if not now, then after we're done live, and then Hannah will uh, will leave some comments as well in the post. Yes. And so mm -hmm. be nice to Hannah. Go say hi to her. Show her some love. Go Please. show her some support. And we'll we'll get more into that towards the end as well. So let's get on to our second guest. Tell the whole world, the whole mighty universe, who is Lizzie Rize. Hey guys, it's Lizzie. So I'm a YouTuber. I run the channel Lizzie's Answers. I've been doing YouTube for 10 years. I've made over 700 videos and I've made around 100 of those videos talking about bipolar disorder. I was diagnosed with bipolar in 2016 when I was a senior in college. Before that, I'd lived with a depression episode for a year and a half. I think like most bipolar people, I was wrongly diagnosed with just unipolar depression. So then I got my official diagnosis at the end of college. Yeah, and like I was talking to you before we started the live stream that I just stumbled upon one of your videos as well, like a few years ago. And like, just like when like people were barely starting to like really come out on YouTube, like really um, not just be like, oh, like speaking into like their webcam is my story, like really like, like make rich content out of it in a way that like was authentic. And so I stumbled across yours and then I would just happen to stumble across your content again, just uh, uh, about a week ago, like when I was looking for guests and I was like, oh, like she's still doing stuff. Like I got to have her on the stream, finally get to work together. So talk, talk really briefly about like how you decided that you were going to start talking about bipolar on your YouTube channel because it didn't start off that way. What struck that? When I was first diagnosed, pretty much everyone in my life denied my symptoms, even though I'd been diagnosed by a therapist and psychiatrist by professionals. I felt so alone just because no one else in my life had bipolar. I spent hundreds of hours doing research and research and research, reading scientific papers, reading just blog posts, comment sections of people talking about bipolar. And I learned so much information and I wanted to share it with other people who also have bipolar. I think you feel so alone and down and horrible about yourself when you're first diagnosed and being armed with as much information as possible helps you live a successful life. So I just wanted other people to feel hope. 
Yeah, and for those who don't know about Lizzie's channel, uh, go check that out. I just wanted to play a short clip. This is, I think this might hey be guys, your most recent it's one. Lizzie. So this video is relationship advice for anyone who is dating someone who has bipolar. The reason I wanted to make this is also very I've been getting in this video. so many emails, <laughs> Twitter DMs, Facebook messages lately. So I think you need to be someone who's very confident and will not get easily offended, meaning do not take it personally. So talk to your girlfriend or wife, ask her if she can relate to what I- So that's just a short clip of one of your videos, just to give an idea of what people can expect. And you are, you're pretty prolific. So you're, you're constantly churning out content and new things. Like how do you get the, like, like how do you get the motivation for that? It's just like constantly trying to find like different ways to talk about bipolar and keep people entertained. It's because of mania. I go through times where I will just come up with like 12 video scripts all at once. Stream of consciousness just like typing so fast. So I think because I'm bipolar and I have breakthrough symptoms even when I'm on meds. So just that manic creativity gives me so many ideas of what to talk about. Also, I have, have a really close relationship with my subscribers. I respond to hundreds of Instagram, Twitter, DMs, emails. People share with me their stories and their questions. And I make videos based upon what type of content my audience wants. Yes. And I also want to throw you a little curveball question as well from one of our audience members, one of our, our lovely mighty followers who asked, how do, I t how do I not take out my feelings on my partner during low periods? Thank you, Jenny really important to go to a therapist and talk to someone who's not a part of your life because they can handle the worst symptoms, the suicidal thoughts, the hopelessness, the insecurity. I tend to hide a lot of my symptoms from my family, friends, even my significant other. I'm a Christian. It's really important to me. It's a huge part of my life. And talking to God about it and journaling about it before sharing those feelings with other people in my life. I think protects them from getting so hurt from the depths of the illness. Thank you, Lizzie. And we'll circle back to you after we get to our third and certainly as most <laughs> uh, panelists for this bipolar round rectangle extravaganza. Tell the whole world, the whole mighty verse, who is Joe Fusaro? Hey everybody, I'm Joe Fusaro. Um, I'm an author, uh, mostly poetry and um, mental health advocate since around 2015 or so. I started speaking publicly with This Is My Brave and then started speaking at high schools and colleges with NAMI for a few years. And that led to my podcast with mental health news radio, Good Air. And, uh, and I have an audio production company where I edit and produce podcasts for uh, pod creators that do mental health work. So I'm, I'm in and around this industry all the time. And uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar one in my late twenties. Uh, my last, you know, serious manic episode was in 2013. And uh, since then I decided that, you know, I, I couldn't believe honestly that nobody was really talking about mental health. And I, I've kind of made it my personal mission to just open up conversations about it since then. Yeah, and I just wanted to give you a special thank you, Joe, because I only reached out to you a couple of days ago, and so and you 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 took up the mantle, you you took on the challenge, and here you are. So, and I I know I know you're you're telling me like, oh, I'm no relationship ship expert and everything. No, no one is. Anyone, well, yeah. anyone who claims that they're a relationship expert, like I'm always like a little bit uh, hesitant about, okay, everyone has experiences with relationships in, in some way, but to be, to claim you're an expert, that just kind of like sets you up for failure. Yeah. I, I try to claim to know nothing most of the time, actually. And I feel like that puts me in a, in a good place to learn and be, be open to listen to people and find out new things. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I'm glad that you, you're you here with us and we're going to take care of you. We're going to have a good time. So thank you. <laughs> thank I love you. your your Abbey Road uh, picture in the background as well. Uh, thanks. <laughs> okay. So again, everyone, my name is Rudy Caceres. This is Mental Health on the Mighty. We're talking about bipolar and romantic love. Love. So if you have any questions, any comments, any uh, experiences yourselves, like we said, we're not experts. We're just, uh, we're just like, we're, 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 we're being honest with you. Okay. So we're, we're telling you how it really is as opposed to like what 
things should be like. So none of us have like the perfect storybook ending romance story and everything. Okay. So, and like I said before, if someone claims that they have that or that they can like make you have that yourselves, they are lying. Okay. So before we get into the swing of things, um, I just want to do a little uh, affirmation, a little grounding exercise. So let me um, do that real quickly. So just center yourselves. Affirmations to help you believe in yourself. I believe in myself. I have faith in myself. I accept myself. I feel complete. You believe in yourself. You have faith in yourself. You accept yourself. You feel complete. May we all believe in ourselves, have faith in ourselves, accept ourselves, and feel complete. I don't know why you were laughing, Joe, but... <laughs> Rudy, you're, was, you're a good was, host. You... you you, yeah, you, he does his work. <laughs> he gets video clips. He gets audio clips. That was good. Yeah, he is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but but honestly, go 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 check go check that out. Um, if you just if you just uh, because it's like on some like random YouTube channel, but um, if you just uh search Joseph Fusaro on YouTube, you'll find those. They're just affirmations. They're really cool. They're like five that. six minutes long, so I can't play the whole thing. But I thought those were really cool. So. Thank you. Thank you. You you have that type of voice to to put people at ease and to center them. So I should just have you talk during this entire thing, just like under like everyone else, just to like kind of get just a like, book or something. <laughs> just get a book and start reading. Yeah. Okay. So uh, before before we start going around the round rectangle again, just give some quick quick shout outs to uh, Hey Liz, who is a regular. Uh, I think we're friends on Facebook too. So hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Um, Joelle Marie says, uh, find anything else that gets the feelings out. Um, and, and Joelle also likes your voice and, um, full disclosure, Joelle is my wife. So she's, she's an awesome person. Right. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, Hey, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Joelle, how you doing? Oh, <laughs> Okay, cool. So, uh, and and also, just keep the comments coming. Like, even when we're we're done live, just please, 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 because I always like to come back later on the day, later on the week, even later on the month, and go check out the comments, try to respond to any I can, um, or at least like them, just to acknowledge you. So, keep that going. Okay, so <laughs> let's uh, let's like kind of like just like get down into the nitty gritty of each person's love story, the experience, what have you. I'm mumbling my words. So let's go back to Hannah. Talk about like when you first, um, talk about your first dating experience or I guess, I guess, um, I guess the question I'll should go. be, yeah. yeah, the question should be, were you in a relationship when you uh, discovered that you were bipolar mm -hmm. or did that come after? So yeah. I'll let you take it away from here. So uh, my, uh, like, I guess you could say relationship, I came out about bipolar when I was in 2015, 16. And I was in a relationship at the time. Unfortunately, it was not a good relationship. However, it was one of the greatest lessons and it contributes to my activism because um, it was full blown gaslighting. And so I had from my first relationship and seeing the way that bipolar can be used against you, I learned a lot about love and bipolar. Um, I learned uh, the signs you have to watch out for when it comes to gaslighting. And um, I also, you know, like uh, to it, it gave me in many ways um, confidence and hope uh, because those things that I had felt about myself in the relationship were untrue. And so I think that you learn more about love when you lose it. 
um, you learn, you learn a lot more when there's been these relationships that kind of haven't worked out. I think you learn about yourself and you learn how to define what love truly is. And I've kind of come into that. I've, I've come into that. So it's, uh, but that was unfortunately the first experience I really had with being open about it was not great. But also, it was one of the greatest lessons that I believe will lead to true love. Talk about disclosure. And so you had that experience, and now you're going back into the dating scene. Um, how do you go about oh. that process? People, different people have different answers, and so. I've, 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 I've concluded that there's no one real answer. No. But what say you? Okay, so it's interesting. I mean, I listen, I don't think you, you know, when you go on a date, it's not like, hey, my name is Hannah Bloom. I live with bipolar disorder. You know, it's like not something that you should feel ashamed about or feel like you're obligated to put on the table. However, especially when you're public, like we all are with it. It, the person's going to find out. You do a Google search, you go on social media, it's right there. Actually, recently dating, and I'm coming into my own, but I was set up with this guy. And I felt I, I, there, I wasn't vibing. I could already see he didn't have a good image. Like he didn't know who I really was. He saw a picture of me and he was going based off of who I was. And I could just tell by his language that he was not about substance. He was about superficial stuff. And I wanted to get a reaction from him. And this was like going on. He was hitting me up constantly. This was like a week ago. And I was like, he said to me, um, you know, what do you do? What, what is your, I was like, well, I wrote a book. And he's like, well, what about, I said, how about you just check me out on Instagram? And literally he goes to Instagram and sees right there, everything. And that alone, like cut it off in a way. So when it comes to disclosure, this is what I have to say. Cause again, it's not a sad story. It's a good one. Cause I didn't even like this dude. And honestly, I was like, it's time to like, he was hitting me up way too much. And I had given him the signals. It wasn't going down. But here's the thing is that bipolar disorder, when it comes to disclosure, is that you do it when you feel comfortable. And I went into it with confidence. Like, it's like, hey, you want to know me? You want to know, like, what my life and substance is like? Then go here. And if you're man enough, then you'll respond to it well. And if you're not a man, and if you're not big enough to handle it, you won't. And he proved his colors there. And so for many things, bipolar, in my opinion, filters out the people that aren't right for me, that don't truly know me. Um, it doesn't define you, but it's a part of yourself. You should take, you should be confident in that. And when you say it, you know, don't go in like, I'm sorry. Be like, hey, this is what it is. Nobody's perfect, like I said. Um, we, we feel, you know, it's stigma. It's stigma tells us that. So you disclose when you're ready, you'll feel it and be confident in it. Now, you didn't I, commit a crime, you know, you didn't commit a crime or anything. Definitely not. And I would imagine that there is a few different type of people that you interact with. And that would be ideally like the kind of person who'd be like, Oh, like, Oh, she's doing all this cool advocacy stuff. She's a badass. I want to be with that kind of person. Then there's also the type of person who would look at all your content and be like, Oh my God, she's bipolar. She's crazy. Like I got to get away from her. Yeah. And then there's like yeah. the type of person who's like, Oh, she's crazy. Like I like crazy girls. They're hot. So <laughs> what is, what is your experience been like with, with dealing with these types of people? 
Oh, yeah. You get a little bit of a taste of everything. Um, you know, I think that as people with mental illness, we have good vibes about people. You know, we have very we're very in tune to our emotions. And I think we can really see beyond the surface of people, their intentions, this, that and the third. Um, how do I handle it? Well, that guy, um, like for an example, I, I cut it off because that's that's how it went. I mean, you know, it, it's in, here. And here's the other part is that I know people want a lot of people want me to be like, oh, you know, for some people it's too much. So I have to be understanding towards him. No, um, I, I don't think so. It's insulting. It's insulting. Um, you you know. And if that doesn't even make sense to me that I have to pay the consequences of ignorance when it comes to love. Um, so how do you deal, you know, how do I deal? I, I'm learning to invite the good people in and I'm learning to stick up for myself. Um, and that's what I want for other people is that even I struggled and struggle with I felt like people, you know, uh, oh, is it too much? You know, is it going to be too much for the guy? And in the last like couple of months, I'm like, I'm listening to myself and what I feel. So when it comes to anything in the men or the women that you deal with, um, trust yourself, believe in yourself and do not take offense to rejection. Thank you, Hannah. We will get back to you again soon, but let's get to Lizzie. Talk about what your relationship, romantic relationship experience has been like since coming out as bipolar. So my first ever hypomanic episode was when I was a freshman in college. So in 2012, I met my first love at the end of my freshman year of college. We dated through my sophomore year. And what started happening in our relationship is something that I later learned is called detachment. So that means that you go from feeling so attracted to someone and into them interested, and you go from that level of euphoria into absolutely nothing, into the detachment where you wanna break up with them, not attracted to them at all, repulsed by them, disgusted by them. And within that, you start to come up with logical reasons for why you should break up, why you're not compatible, why the relationship is emotionally abusive. So I went from like this hypomanic infatuation into nothing where I felt so far away from him. And I get messages from people all the time who break up, get back together, break up, get back together on a loop because of going through these periods of detachment. So I ended up breaking up with him because of the detachment. And at the time I remember knowing that it was something inside of me changing the feelings about him, but it wasn't actually me. And so breaking up with him was something I regretted for years after because he was my first love. And at the time, right after we broke up, he actually went to a therapist to talk about our relationship. And the therapist said, I think she has bipolar disorder. So this was like three years before I was officially diagnosed. And hearing that from your ex-boyfriend, you're bipolar. It honestly felt like a giant insult. Like he was just calling me so emotional and awful. And because of that, I really didn't take it seriously until a couple years later when I was first diagnosed with depression and my depression meds were not working very well. So because of this relationship, I ended up diagnosing myself with bipolar, going to a therapist and psychiatrist explaining my symptoms, and then I was officially diagnosed. So from that relationship, I learned about detachment and how it's not real. You have all these feelings that suddenly go away and you have these intuitions so strong to break up, but it's literally just your bipolar going on. So my current relationship, I've been with my partner for three and a half years. We're getting married in 2022. Congrats. And because of the trauma, thank you, we're so excited. Um, because of the trauma of my first relationship, I've known to never make that mistake again. So I went into this relationship promising myself that I am not allowed to break up the relationship unless it's physically abusive or he cheats on me. And so because of that, I've avoided doing what so many bipolar people do. I literally get thousands of messages that I've read about people who are dating or married to someone who's bipolar or people who are bipolar who go through this cycle of infatuation, detachment, on and off. 
And one of the first questions that was asked is, was talking about how bipolar people are like not worthy for a relationship or are gonna be unhealthy in the relationship. And the reason that there is a 90% divorce rate is because of this detachment going on and the bipolar person breaking up on and off the relationship. And I personally believe that bipolar people who get treatment, stay on meds, go to therapy, I believe they're even better in a relationship because they're so self-aware emotionally about who they are. So definitely don't think that you're going to be bad in a relationship. The people who are bad in relationships avoid treatment and don't believe they're truly bipolar. But if you take your mental illness seriously and get help, you're going to be even healthier in a relationship. Now, what was your current partner's reaction when he found out or did he already know? So I'm really, really open about it. I share with like absolutely everyone. I think it decreases stigma because they realize that there's someone in their life who has a job, who's working, who's passionate, who has great friendships. And they realize like, oh, like Lizzie's bipolar. She's like totally a normal person. <laughs> like it must not be that bad. <laughs> I mean, even though it is really bad, obviously what you're going through, but just realizing that like bipolar people are like, seem normal just like everyone else so he knew pretty early on that I was bipolar and he actually has family members and friends with bipolar so it wasn't that big of a deal to him at all he just thought like it's another terminal illness it's not that big of a deal and he's actually the reason that I've stayed on my meds for so long I used to go on and off of them all the time and he said if we're gonna be in a relationship you have to stay on your meds for us to have a healthy relationship. So he's a huge reason why I'm able to follow my treatment plan. Awesome. And again, congrats on your engagement. So I'm, I'm sure there'll, there'll be plenty of videos on your YouTube channel to come, like as you get closer to that process. So thank you for sharing and we'll get back to you as well. Let's go to Joe, talk about your experience. Thank you, Sharon, for loving the mighty. <laughs> So I guess in order to uh, take you up to today, I got to take you back to my 20s when um, I was in serious denial of bipolar. I was fine with accepting uh, any doctor or psychologist that told me I was depressed, anxious or ADHD, anything after that. Like I wasn't really hearing it. Uh, that being said, I did have bipolar one. So any relationship that I got in, like took off like a rocket. I mean, there was, you know, sleepless nights going on vacations like you know meeting everybody doing you know just um always busy until i would burn out kind of what lizzie was saying like you know everything was perfect and then all of a sudden there was nothing and um i didn't really have the thoughts that i didn't like the person or didn't want to be with them but i would exhaust myself out i would go into such a manic period that i would crash and then become depressed and just have no interest at all in dating so that was pretty much every relationship in my 20s. And uh, up until 30, when I was 33 was my last hospitalization. And after that, I decided that I really needed to come to grips with my diagnosis. I had to start taking care of myself. And then I went on like this um, probably a four or five year period where I just did self-care. I wanted to get to know myself. I wanted to get to know who I was. And somehow by doing that, everything else started to come together. And I felt like my friendships got better. Um, I was more open to being in relationships. I was meeting people that I had more things in common with. And over the last year, I've noticed, uh, which has been, it's a whole other show in itself, trying to date with COVID on the apps and everything. Uh, but I've noticed that the people that I've met um, are extremely accepting. And I think that that has a lot to do with my openness and acceptance of it and how, you know, th what, um, you know, what they were saying about being public about it, it, it helped me, it helped me being public because there's no way now for me to hide and say like, Oh no, 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 that's not me. That's not who I am. Like I, I haven't had a bipolar, uh, episode in, I'd say like almost eight years now. At the same time, I'm I'm doing all the things. I am, you know, doing every single thing I have to to keep myself there. And I'm I think my openness and acceptance really has led the way for me to feel more comfortable and for others to be able to accept it. 
How do you think you would handle that situation, though, Joe, if you were in a relationship and, say, you had a manic episode in the middle of it? If I had, uh, I, th I would hope, and maybe if I got serious enough with a person, I think that I would have to let them know that there's some kind of conversation that we're going to have to have if they notice, you know, she notices that I become manic or I start to get really depressed and I stop, you know, associating with anybody. There has to be a way, you know, for her to tell me and for me to not get upset about it. Because I think when anybody tried to bring my symptoms to my attention when I was younger, I would get really offended by that. And I, I think now it would be me going into it knowing like, all right, this person cares about me and I'm going to try to not get offended by it and, and, uh, and, and go see somebody and get some help and not be afraid of that. No. Awesome. And I, I, I think you would handle that situation well. I think you are quite the catch, Joe Fusaro. So oh, I, you, I, I look forward to coming to <laughs> your wedding someday. Yes, yes. Oh, well, you know, let's let's take our time. But yeah, yeah, that's, you're invited. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And we'll we'll live stream it to you. We'll talk about that a little okay. bit later. So <laughs> <laughs> so we we are we are like we're really swinging now. So again, thank you to my panelists Hannah Blum, Lizzie Rize, uh, Joseph Fusaro for, and thank you to uh, Rodolin who is uh, make, who just followed us, uh, followed Mental Health and the Mighty. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, any comments? Uh, um, Kat says nice, ad some good advice, Hannah. I appreciate that oh, as well. Thank you. So Joelle Marie says uh, too much is such a crap message. <laughs> also will agree. It is. Joelle also says okay, it's funny, but that's a thing. Quote unquote, hot crazy crazy girls. Yuck. Oh yeah. Vomit emoji. Um, and Kat also agrees as well. And thank you again, Liz. Thank you, Peter, for sharing as well in the comments. So we're talking about bipolar and romantic love. And I wanted to go more into the nitty gritty of some of the highlights and lowlights of each panelist experience, relationships, dating, and everything in between. So let's go back to Hannah. Do you have any other stories, both good and bad? I don't want to make it sound like, like, Dating and bipolar is just like this awful experience and what have you. Although it can be, let's be honest. No, but let's go back to you, <laughs> Hannah. Yeah. Um, the first of all, Lizzie and Joe, I love everything y'all are saying. So inspiring. Um, and congrats, Lizzie. That's really exciting about your engagement. But um, yeah, no, there's tons of positives. So I think that one of the great things in love is that we have so much to give. And on the and, and I'm not I'm not trying to sugarcoat the difficult side of it. I just think that that is I, I think it's just, you know, we sometimes need more of the positive, like, you know, Rudy said. So we have, uh, you know, I've had people tell me we have a, a gift of empathy and emotions in many ways and, and to expose somebody to a very different life. I, I not even, I, sorry, not a different life, a different perspective on the world. Um, the openness. And I've had people say that they've learned a lot in relationships. It, re it really just depends on on where you're at with your diagnosis and um, the people you bring out into your life uh, in the in the person. I, I used to bring in toxic people, which is something so that was not going to work out. But um, I think that with anybody who is open minded, it can be such a relationship and in dating um, to blossom. I mean, I have funny stories where dudes have like tried to use my like the fact that I'm open about bipolar like against me. And really, it was because I just wasn't into them. But I, I made one guy really upset one time. But there are so many other guys. And so I, I mean, obviously, no women as well that are going to embrace you, you know, and I've been there. It's nice. Let me ask you, Hannah, have you ever had a, been in a relationship or dating and been in the middle of a manic episode? 
Um, I have, yes, I have been in a relationship where I definitely, uh, I relate to uh, Lizzie when she talks about the disconnection and what ended up happening is like, uh, my emotions are, I can, uh, they're used for the good, but I can really strike a person um, with them. And I think that during a manic episode, I push people away. And I mean, I push this individual away. Um, and I use my emotions. Go ahead. Oh, were you going to say something? No. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, I pushed, I pushed this individual away because it, it felt uncomfortable. I, I'm very used to taking care of myself with bipolar. And so I was get, it was almost like they were coming too close into my, into my little world where I'm completely raw. I, I'm in a very big growing process right now. Like I just turned, you know, I turned 30 a little while ago and, and I'm blossoming into a different type of love um, where I'm real and authentic. So um, yeah, when I was in those emotional battles, I push people away when it comes to love and relationships and dating. Thank you, Hannah. How about you, Lizzie? Any highlights, lowlights you'd like to share with us? I love everything Hannah said. I relate to it a lot. I think empathy is the biggest thing. My entire life, even before my symptoms came out, I was just such an empathetic person. So many bi bipolar people I've talked to are the exact same way. I think we can just feel people's emotions so strongly, cry with them, feel joy with them. And objectively, we feel every emotion stronger than non-bipolar people, which means within a relationship, we're going to love harder, be more joyful towards them, be more grateful towards them, just every emotion ever. Obviously, there's negatives because we also feel the negative emotions stronger. But I think in general, a bipolar person is just going to be more enthusiastic about the relationship, more infatuated. I think my um, fiance gets annoyed at me sometimes when I'm a bit manic because he's like, you need to like be less obsessed with me. I don't want to talk this much, like get away from me. Like I don't <laughs> want to kiss all the time. Like <laughs> It's annoying when you're manic because you're just like so obsessively in love with them. But I think there's a beauty in that too and where you feel all the aspects of emotion. I think the negative part is just all the trauma that I've been through in depression and in mania. I think it's like objectively the hardest thing I'll ever go through was my severe depression episode. And so I think going through that so young and being able to share the hardest part of your life with your significant other so young, I think it sets up the marriage to be really successful and blossoming because you've already gone through something really hard and gotten through it. It's not like, oh, in the future, you'll have a miscarriage or someone will get ill. Like, You've already had that horrible thing happening and you've been able to work through it together. Yeah, no. Um, thank you for making that clear. And I also like I like how the way you talk about mania and bipolar, because you demonstrate that mania doesn't have to be this like, you know, it doesn't mean like you're this monster who's like making all these like dangerous decisions and all this stuff and harming people like you can manage it. You can live in it and even thrive in it. It doesn't mean like you you let it completely consume you and all that stuff. But I appreciate you sharing that experience because it's an experience that a lot of people don't hear about. You hear about all of the salaciousness and all that stuff. So thank you so much for really sharing that side of it as well. Even, even even if your partner gets annoyed every now and then, that's <laughs> he can suck it up. Okay, so let's go to Joe. Um, any other highlights, lowlights that you want to talk about? Well, I, I think the big thing this time around is I'm trying not to overthink things. I, I think in the past, what I did was at the beginning of a relationship, um, in the first couple of weeks, I'm already thinking about like, oh, is this person marriage material? Like, what's what's our future going to look like? And it, and it wasn't that I wanted to think those things. But when you have mania, bipolar, even, you know, anxiety, like your mind can just start going to places that probably like it's it's not particularly wise to go there that early and then uh the opposite was true where i would catastrophize where i you know um 
is is she going to cheat is you know how how is this going to end up bad like are we are we going to have enough money to live in the place that we want to live like all these things that probably weren't important and now this time around i'm really just trying to go by a feeling right like if it if it feels right and they're a good person and they're understanding and you know it it, it should just work there i i don't believe that we should be overthinking you know, the process, it, sh it should just be a feeling you should know in your heart, you should know in your gut and, um, and let it happen. Don't make it happen. Let it happen. I think is the big one now. Let me ask you, Joe, say you go out on a date with someone and like you're, you're chatting, you're having a good time. And then that person says, Hey, by the way, I just want to let you know that I'm bipolar initial reaction. Go initial reaction. So, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 I mean, it's it's something I've I've definitely thought about though because I, I do think I every once in a while even today when I was thinking about this conversation I was thinking about what if it was the other way around and what if I got into a relationship healthy now and met somebody who was like me in my twenties and um, I personally I I know it's not my show but I'd like to hear your opinion or. Uh, Hannah and Lizzie's opinion on, you know, what happens if the tables are turned? How how do you go about that? Um, I mean, well, I mean, me personally, like I my my partner, like I we already knew each other from social media. We already knew we were both bipolar. So, and that like I I, I always kind of felt like I would actually let me just put it on all four of us. Um, I actually. I always had a feeling that I would end up dating someone who was also, or even marrying someone who was also a quote unquote mental health advocate, just because like of how like active and vocal I am and how passionate about the thing. Like it'd be hard for me to be in a successful relationship with someone who was like, like not in our scene, not in our community, just cause it would just be okay. like trying to constantly trying to explain things and like all that stuff. And like, which, which some people like, some people want like that whole, like just someone completely outside of their world and opposite track and all that stuff. And so, but, but yeah, um, I, it's not like I was like going out of my way to look for it. I always just felt like that's like the type of person that I would be most compatible with, not like ideal match. I don't believe in that. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it is something that I would definitely would not have had a problem with, obviously. <laughs> but let's hear from any of our other esteemed panelists. Lizzie, you want to go first? Okay, I can go. I'm thinking. So um, <laughs> because my fiance has bipolar disorder in his family, I always joke with him that he has like one of the bipolar genes. So in a lot of ways, he understands me so well compared to like my other friends who don't have bipolar in their family. And he also experiences unipolar depression sometimes. I think for me personally, I wouldn't be good in a relationship with another person who's bipolar just because I have the tendency to go off meds so much. I think it's easy for both people to spiral together. And I mm -hmm. always describe it as like mania is an addiction. So I'm addicted to mania. It would be like if someone is um, an ex-drug addict or an alcoholic, and then you find someone who has the exact same addiction as you, I think that would be hard for both of you to stay on top of it. So I think some bipolar people are like way better at me and know how to stick to their treatment plan. But my past is just like, I've gone off meds five different times and then I've stayed off of them for like six months. So just me personally, I need someone who's not bipolar to keep me accountable to my treatment plan. Anything to add on that, Hannah? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, and uh, like, you know, that's what's difficult is like, what if I did like meet someone that also had it? Like, would I be as, you know, I think I, you know, I basically agree with Lizzie that it, it would be your, and I, I've said that too as well, that you're addicted to feeling in many ways. And I think especially with mania, um, y'all can just be rolling off of each other. You know, it's like, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know. 
But I loved what Joe too, what you said about the overthinking. Like I read a quote, I think a lot of people with bipolar disorder do this. And I read something recently that was like overthinking often ruins things before yeah. it even begins. And we, and it says you should just let it naturally evolve. And I'm doing the same thing right now. Cause I overthink when it comes to it, like, I have a research lab. Yeah, yeah. Like, like um, yeah. I'm like analyzing There's a whole team. There's a whole team. There's a whole team. Yeah. There's a whole team. Exactly. I just have these visuals. Yeah. No, it's it's we really get into it, you know. Yeah, yeah yep. definitely. Um, and and we can definitely go on about this topic for years and years and years probably but we got to start wrapping up before we get into our final thoughts um let's just all can we just all show some love to Lori, who says just lost my mom last night i'm bipolar slash depression any hopefuls are helpful for giving my loss in a deep depression state so um any anything that let's let's just all shower Lori with some support Lori, you are loved, and I'm so sorry that happened. I can't imagine that pain. You're absolutely loved. And re don't be afraid to reach out to a grief therapist, a grief counselor, and get the help, and get the help to help you in that process. But you're not alone in this community. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's very big of you to also, like, come on to yeah. a public platform like this on Facebook Live and the Mighty with all these people watching and being vulnerable like that. So that's that's big. That shows a lot of you. And um, please, 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 uh, just keep reaching out to your support network. Uh, if you don't have anyone in your community, like look up some support, uh, support groups. There's a lot of great um, private Facebook groups even where people can support each other and give each other emotional cookies. So yeah, there's always answers. So thank you really um, for for sharing that with us. I know it's not easy to share, but you are a badass and I really hope you get through this, but just know it's not an easy process. It's not supposed to be. So just honor your feelings. Um, it's okay to live in a depression for a while, but just keep uh, validating yourself. Keep surrounding yourself with people who can affirm you, affirm you and just keep on being awesome. Right, Joe and Lizzie. Yeah. Yeah. I would say just hold on to hope because it, it will get better. And, um, I, I I feel terrible and I'm sorry, but yeah, hold on to hope. Yes. So um, hang in there, Lori. Um, Joel, on a lighter note, Joel says the mic that uh, Joe has looks like a small dog and I hope I'm not the only person who thought so. <laughs> and that's what we call in the industry a dead cat, actually. So I want to put eyes on it. Um. <laughs> oh, creepy! <Yeah. laughs> and uh, thank you for the support, Teresa. Teresa's family, so I appreciate her as well. So, um, and thank you for showing some support as well, William. Um, same thing from Cat. Oh, I love it when the mighty viewers and they support each other as well. So, um, Joel also says it's also important to do honestly what you need to do dealing with those feelings. Agreed. Um, um, Kat shares a group on Facebook as well, so uh, go check that out. Um, and um, also, finally, before we get into our final thoughts and wrap this mother up, uh, Joelle says, I was sorted with someone who probably didn't have a good personal understanding of themselves. Sorry for blocking you, Lizzie, as I did with myself. But I think we we're at different points, which was fine, actually. But then they were a jerk about things that aren't my job in regards to that kind of stuff. And I can't take that on because I have to take on my stuff. Well, sorry to hear for that, uh, Joelle, but it sounds like things worked out in the end. So let's get on to final thoughts and let's go back to Hannah. So any other final um, words of wisdom or anything else that you want? I know you have your, your book that came out last year when I interviewed oh, yeah. you, which you signed for. So please make yeah. sure people know about that. Oh yeah. Um, I am the author of a book called the truth about broken, the unfixed version of self love. It's on Amazon and uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Hannah D bloom. Um, and what I would say, so thank you. And I'm so happy to be here and uh, like Lizzie and Joe and Rudy, amazing. And anybody out there, the thing, the last thing I would say is don't go into dating and love as the underdog. Cause you're not, and don't let your diagnosis of bipolar or stigma tell you that you have to feel 
lesser than anyone because you're not and you're loved and you're beautiful and you're in a community of badasses and um, you will find it. But love yourself first. Thank you. Any uh, sneak peeks to things to come? I'm sure you got big plans for 2021. Oh yeah, I've got big plans. I'm coming out with my first poetry collection going through this process. I'm coming out with a children's book and um, I have got a lot, you know, just going to really get into, I have a website launching that's going to be about activism and getting things done in the community. Thank you, Hannah. I appreciate you. Thank I appreciate you. you for sticking with me throughout all these years. So always, I'm sure we'll get to work together again. So we'll definitely stay in touch okay. until then. Take it away, Lizzie. Final thoughts. That's amazing, Hannah. You are doing so much. That's so exciting. So my Thank final you. thought is just definitely, <laughs> you're welcome. My final thought is definitely self-care and self-love. I think besides medication, the most important things to do are working out every single day, doing cardio and keeping a consistent sleep schedule. Those are the things that I've done for years and have just helped me so much in addition to my medications and my therapist. My plans for 2021, I just finished my first book. It's about my conversion into Catholicism, but it also talks so much about my entire experience with bipolar in college and beyond. It was really hard writing some parts of it. I cried so much just thinking back to my experience in severe depression and suicidal thinking and everything I went through. But I know so many of my followers have bipolar disorder and it will help them so much feeling understood. Now, can we expect a Hannah Bloom collaboration in the near future? I Always. would love that. I would love to have you guys on my YouTube channel. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. We, we, we are all friends now. I always love that when I bring new people into the fold and we can all like so collaborate and support each other. So thank you, Lizzie, for taking a uh, risk on me and uh, for also being part <laughs> of the mighty community now. So a lot of people are going to go check out your channel. And if when you, when you go check out Lizzie's channel, just go make sure to comment that we saw you on the mighty. Okay. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay. So lastly, final thoughts, Joe. Uh, final thoughts. I'd say one thing that my therapist told me about a year ago that really stood out because I, I was scared to death to start dating again. I really I had a lack of confidence. It had been a while and uh, previously had was very unsuccessful in my attempts. And he said, uh, don't reject yourself before they get a chance to, you know, if you reject yourself, they're going to automatically. So I would say that, um, you know, even try to believe in yourself. I know it's it's hard to just start doing it, but if you try and think about it, eventually you'll build on that. And, uh, you know, if you don't reject yourself, they won't reject you. And um, just keep up with your self-care. Keep up with whatever got you healthy, whatever got you feeling like yourself again. Don't let that go when you start dating or start a relationship because that's when I, I believe things will start to unravel. Um, as far as where you could find me, I'm on Instagram at sincerely underscore Joe. Um, I have eight poetry books on Amazon. If you just look up Joseph S. Fusaro and a podcast called Good Air, where I talk about creativity, mindfulness, and just have uh, Dharma chats with my friends about what's going on in life, mental health, uh, anything else. So, and uh, I want to thank you three and the mighty and uh, just everybody for watching today, because I think that the more we can bring up topics like this, especially with Valentine's Day coming up, the more the more we break that stigma. And uh, it's been it's an amazing thing. I mean, you're all saying that you started around 2015, 2016, and, and just to see the change from then until now is, is absolutely unbelievable. And sometimes day to day, it's hard to see. But if you look five, six years at a time, it's it's really something. So thank you, guys. Well, thank you, Joe. And I totally forgot about Valentine's Day. That was like the reason why we did this topic in February. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel right. I mean, I'm used to like the past two years were like the first like like two years like, I've actually been in a relationship and got to go out on a date in in Valentine's Day. So and like and whereas whereas this year like I, I'm married, but it just it still doesn't feel like for obvious reasons because it's not like I can do a lot besides like Gotta get those flowers. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, yeah, I don't, we don't, we don't do flowers just because we have a dog that was probably eat them in one day. But um, now you kind of put me on the spot, so I could probably have to get them now. So that's right. 
<laughs> cool. Um, and thank you all. Go support these lovely human beings. Um, we'll try to leave as, leave as many links to their content and ways to support them in the comments below. So go check that out. Feel free to still comment and like and heart and share. We love it when people when like want to share it within like their support groups on Facebook and so on and so forth. So please, that's how we can keep growing. That's how like that's how I know as host that I'm headed in the right direction and feel um, like I'm doing the right thing with doing all these panels. So thank you for all the love so far. Please, please, please keep showing the love. And that's going to do it for this month. Thank you, Hannah Blum. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate you all. I appreciate the mighty. Thank you for the, the, the big wigs you. at the mighty for giving me this platform to bring on these cool people and to talk about love relationships, romance and all that good stuff and bad stuff and everything in between until next month where I'll be back with a new topic and new guests and uh, probably Joe in the near future as well. Cause I feel like I owe him for coming on here to short notice, but he's awesome. No, so <laughs> thank you all until next month. Stay mighty.